Now isn't this the most tantalizing game console boot jingle ever? 22 years have passed since the PlayStation was introduced to the world by Sony and this music still catches your mind and pulls you towards it with curiosity. In this video, I will be upgrading my old PlayStation to HD graphics and sound and also enhance its capability to do much more. Welcome to Project Octacore PlayStation. After doing my research, I chose the Odroid XU4 because it is the fastest single board computer out there and also has a rapidly growing community on the internet. I was so happy that they took their time to thank me personally. This is a nice personal touch. I ordered the SBC with an AC adapter specially designed to power the Odroid and I also ordered a 16GB eMMC5 storage media which will store the OS and the game ROMs. The Odroid XU4 comes nicely packed in a box. Opening it you get access to the SBC neatly wrapped in an anti-static bag. I especially ordered the fan version of the Odroid. The fanless version, uh, though it was silent, but I wanted something more powerful. And when it gets hot, it needs the fan. I then disassembled the PlayStation to make it ready for the new internals. I just love the simplified design of this machine. It is just so easy to disassemble. I chose the PlayStation to make my multi emulator and coding machine because I just love the aesthetics of the console and it has ample of space to put in an SBC and also internally power it. Yep, I cleaned up the chassis and now it is ready to take in the Odroid XU4 SBC. First, I need to prepare the controller ports to work with the Odroid. For this I used an USB to PlayStation controller port adapter and soldered it to the original ports. The quality of these port converters was really cheap, but it did the job. The PCB was so thin and flimsy that at one point I feared that I might accidentally break it or something.
I then tested the image that came preloaded in the eMMC card, but finally figured out that this is not what I wanted for the machine. I wanted to make the experience of using it as near the original PlayStation and as streamlined as possible. I wanted to make it my emulation machine. I wanted to make it my coding machine. And to do all that, I wanted to I wanted the best OS. I must have downloaded and installed a lot of operating systems on this machine. But I finally stopped when I found Batrasera Linux. The Batrasera Linux is a specially designed recall boss, recall box OS port that has RetroArch and emulation station running under a very light and stable Linux. The authors have provided a great support for this too on the Batrasera forums and that too for free. It's amazing. And it's free. But there is still one problem. There is no support for boot animation on the old Red XU4. But I was not stopping there. I modified the source code and compiled myself a new version of Batracera Linux specially designed to use the boot video. And I can show you that ahead in this video. I then disassembled an external PC Blu-ray drive that will become the new Blu-ray disc player in my octa-core PlayStation. After taking out the Blu-ray disk drive, I did a fit test with the PlayStation. Fit some hot glue and more to the chassis, I was able to fit it near perfectly. Yep, that works. I also did a disc spin test just to check if closing the lid does not hamper the disc spin. And I think it works fine. Yep. I then did a smoke test to check if the drive worked. I connected it to my PC, put a disc in it, and checked if the PC was able to read it. I put in an audio CD. To start the reading process, I had to push these two switches. I need to modify those so that closing the lid of the PlayStation triggers the disk read. And yes, it works. I then modded the disk detect switch so that closing the lid will trigger an alert to the Blu-ray disc player. I also modded the power supply and I fit in the AC adapter on the same board. I modified it so that I can use the switch for the PlayStation, the on-off switch, to power the Odroid. The alignment and positioning of the different components inside the housing is mostly done. And now it's time for a test.
all right that boot video in full hd is just amazing the system loads to emulation station and i can also use my controller to control the system and play games Batosera Linux includes some test ROMs that you can use to check your system. It has a lot of features including scan lines and you can also customize each emulator as you wish. So different customizations can be done for different emulators. Now, as you can see in this test ROM, the scan lines line up really nice. Uh, I don't know if it is visible in the camera, but uh, to the naked eye, it looks really amazing. Just like an old CRT screen, such a big CRT screen. I also installed the white power LED. As this machine has a lot of CPU power, the emulation is really perfect. The Octa-Core PlayStation is ready to be screwed shut. And as you can see, I have put in a USB port on the rear of the machine so as to connect a keyboard or an external USB drive. It also has Ethernet port and an HDMI out for audio and video. The Octa-Core PlayStation is now ready. The rear aesthetics look really nice. And now it's time to test the machine. I've connected it to my 1080p projector. Really nice. The RGB banding that you see on the camera is because of my projector. It is actually uh, a DLP projector that throws out RGB and the camera sometimes fails to understand it or tries to read it. So that is uh, why the, there are bands on the screen. But to the naked eye, it appears really perfect and pristine. As you can see inside, there, there's the flashing heartbeat LED on the Odroid.
let's put in an audio CD to test. Now let's go to Cody. Yep, the disk is being detected by the system. Now, as it is not connected, connected to the internet, so I cannot fetch the disk details, but I can still play it. Well, there you go. The Octaco PlayStation is now complete.